take a bit of time today to just show you how easy it is to create a full multi-colored background with the new um, cover plate hexagons um, and use it in conjunction with the Happy Hexagon stamp set. Um, I really put a lot of time into thinking about how how best to design this um, type of product and how um, it could be the most versatile and easy to use. And um, I'm really excited to show you a few of the little things that I built into this system today. So what I decided to do was um, you create um, a background with six colors. I played around on some scratch paper and came up with this. And I ended up using um, orange zest, summer sunrise, melonberry, aqua mist, Hawaiian shores, and berry sorbet. Um, what we're using in conjunction with this is um, this color chart I have available for download on my blog for free. And um, I found when I was playing with the cover plate um, initially, I was spending a lot of time kind of messing around moving the pieces around so that colors weren't touching each other. So this chart just kind of breaks it down for you um, so that it's really, really um, easy to create a multicolor background without um, doing any of the, um, you know, experimenting like I did um, when I was first using the set. So what I have done is I've stamped my colors and the patterns I want for each color on this piece of scratch paper. And I'm going to use this color chart to establish how many of each hexagon or half hexagon I need to stamp in order to create my balanced background. So first I'm going to um, note each of these with um, letters and um, I'm going to make this A, B, C, D, E, and F. So that's six colors. And then according to the chart, A has six full size and one half. Um, the chart also has um, the little tiny triangles on the side, on the very ends. Um, I, for my particular design, I'm not going to be using those, but the numbers are there if you need them. So I put six slash one because I know that'll be six whole hexagons, one half for color A. B is six and one. C is six and one. D is four and two. E is five and one and F is four and two. So that just kind of breaks it down for me so I know exactly what I need of each color. So now that I have that kind of planned out, um, I'm going to take the um, die cut cover plate. I literally just took this out of my um, die cutting machine here. And there it is, all the pieces die cut. You're just going to love how easy this is. So now that I have this die cut, I'm going to pop out all of the pieces. I'm going to try to just punch out mostly the whole ones first so I can put those all in one pile together. You can see they pop out really, really easy. And I'm going to put the all the half hexagons in a pile separately. And like I said, for my project, I'm not going to be using these little triangles on the ends, but some of you may uh, need that for whatever you're designing. And if that's the case, um, the color chart includes those as well. You just make a third pile. So I have all the um, halves and holes punched out of the cover plate. And I'm going to make sure I have these divided up correctly. So these are all my holes and these are all my halves right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay out my ink pads here. I don't know if I'm going to have enough room to do this on camera or not. There's orange zest, summer sunrise, melonberry, Aquamist, Aquamist down here, Hawaiian Shores, and Berry Sorbet. 
So obviously you might want to spread this out a little bit more um, in your workspace, but um, for the purpose of this video, I'm kind of smushing them in here. Now I'm gonna all I'm gonna do is refer to the chart and go through and place the hexagons next to each ink pad color. And you know you may do these steps a bit differently once you figure out your own uh, method, but this is how I I found I like to do it. So I know color A, which is orange zest. Um, I need six full size. And I'm going to set those right next to the orange zest pad, and I need one half. Summer Sunrise is six, four, five, six, and one half. And I'm just going to go through um, in the same manner for all of the ink pads. So here I have all of my hexagons divided up um, amongst my colors. And then what I'm going to do is actually stamp the hexagons. I'm going to show you how easy that is. I'm just going to move these ink pads to the side here. Put this down. I'll kind of leave these right here so you can see a few of them. But um, what I'm going to do is just grab um, an ink pad. And I know that these hexagons go with this ink pad. Got my Hawaiian Shores here, and I know that I used it with this stamp. I'm gonna put it on the block here, and the hexagon stamps are a bit from Happy Hexagons are a bit larger than the die cut, so it makes it very easy to stamp on on the hexagons themselves. So I'm gonna just do this whole pile with this one stamp. It's very easy to just go through and get all of these done at once. Now, one thing I wanted to mention was you don't have to be limited by the patterns in the um, Happy Hexagon set, although there's some awesome ones in there. Um, you can use background basics, um, the bitty background set. I mean, there's all kinds of options that you could do. So right there, I've got all of my Hawaiian shores done. And I'm gonna go ahead and leave that pile right next to the um, Hawaiian shores ink pad. And now, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and do the berry sorbet, which I know is this pattern. And it's just the same thing. I grab the pile that was next to the ink pad and went to town. Now, I've taken that little sample strip that I made earlier and I have just piled um, the hexagons I stamped in front of each one so that I know um, what color is which. Now I've cut a piece of vintage cream cardstock um, to A2 cover size, four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm gonna take this cover plate piece and I'm just gonna temporarily tape it in place over that. Now you can um, go ahead and glue this on and use it um, for, but I'm gonna show you kind of a fun little thing you can do just using this as a placement tool. Um, so I've got that temporarily adhered in place. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and use this tape runner and I'm just gonna add a little dab of it, of this uh, tape, just a little bit in each of the hexagon openings. Now that I have all the adhesive in place, I'm gonna go back and um, grab my color chart reference and it labels where all the colors can pop in and I'm just gonna lay this um, next to my pile here and use that as a reference. So I'm gonna start with A and um, according to the color chart here a half piece goes here and because the cover plate has all those openings you can literally just pop the pieces in 
without worrying about getting anything straight or anything. And it's kind of difficult to get hexagons lined up because of the funky angles on them. So it's really nice to be able to use the chart as a guide um, just to make things a bit easier for you. So I'm just going to go through and pop these in here. And this is actually really fun uh, more than anything else. It's just so precise and easy to do and it's kind of fun to just kind of see your pattern come to life. Um, I'm moving on to B now and I'm just putting these into place exactly like the uh, color chart shows. This color chart is totally worth its weight in gold because the first time I made a project with this I spent quite a bit of time kind of fiddling around with the colors a bit so this really takes all the guesswork out of it, which I love. So easy to do, and the results are just absolutely stunning and amazing. Okay, moving on to C. Okay, this goes here. And just the multitude of colors, um, color combinations you could do is just, oh my goodness, uh, completely unlimited with this. And um, you could use these the same um, color planner for um, pattern papers just by um, noting which pattern paper is which letter. Super, super easy to do. That one up. Okay, moving on to D, which is the Aqua Mist. Pop these in. And I'm popping in the very last ones here. Now what's kind of cool is that you can leave some of these blank if you want. You definitely don't have to fill them all in, but just for the purpose of doing a full, tutor full tutorial, I thought I would go ahead and fill them all in here. Now, like I said earlier, you could definitely um, have, you could have glued on um, the cover plate frame portion um, and you get this really, really cool look. But what I wanted to show you that you can also do after all of these are adhered in place is that you can actually peel it back up and you have all of these hexagons perfectly placed on your card. And I don't know if you can see it well in the video, but the dimension is so cool. And they're all perfectly placed, perfectly lined up, and it didn't really take any extra effort. And because of the handy color chart, all of the colors are mixed together well without any um, any experimenting. It's just all, all the work's done for you. So you can see just how easy it is to um, create your multicolor backgrounds by using the color chart and uh, just using your creativity and having fun with it. Lots and lots and lots of options here. Now, I just want to just show you another technique really quickly. Um, I die cut the cover plate from craft cardstock and I'm actually going to remove a portion of this because I want to um, fit in a sentiment and I just wanted to show you that when you're playing around with this you can experiment with removing certain portions of this um, to incorporate into your designs. So I made those cuts first and then I'm going back in to trim off these little pieces so that the hexagons maintain their perfect hexagon frame shape. I 
that and see I have an opening to add a sentiment. I'm going to adhere this and I wanted to show you the best place, way to adhere is to use a 1 8 inch score tape and if I designed the cover plate just so it perfectly fits on that rim on the frame around the exterior edge just like that and then all I have to do is peel the backing off on all four sides and I am attaching this to a piece of vintage green cardstock and what's nice is that this cover plate is already cut a two size so that it always fits on a card cover perfectly so there's how I created an opening for a sentiment. Now I also wanted to show you, like I mentioned earlier, the process I did earlier you can also do with pattern paper. You can see I've got this laid out. This time I'm using five different types um, of hexagons. And I'm going to pop them into um, this just like I did last time. I put adhesive in all the spots except for the spot where I want to put a sentiment later. And I've got my color chart I'm using as a reference to match up my letters and my papers. And I'm just going to plug in uh, the shapes just like I um, did in the past. So here I have um, just plugged in all of those different pattern papers and I left this spot open. And now I'm able to take my sentiment into that opening. from a wildflower garden and I'm just going to add that right in this opening like that. After you've had the fun of plugging in all those pattern paper hexagons all that's left to do is um, just tie some twine around it and add it to a card base and you're done quick and easy. Um, I wanted to show you yet another technique. Um, like I said at the beginning of this video, this combination of products is literally um, just unlimited possibilities. Um, what I wanted to show you is that um, you can keep one of these um, cover plate die cut frames on hand um, to use as a guide for making borders. So I've got a piece of white cardstock here. And I decided that I wanted to put a border of two rows of hexagons. And so I'm going to kind of lay that in place. And once again, I'm going to use some tape here to kind of keep everything in place while I'm um, adhering everything. Like so. And I'm going to take a tape runner. And I know I want my border to go here and here in these two bottom rows. So I'm adding some tape here. It's much add easier to add your adhesive um, through this frame like this than to sit there and put it on every single little hexagon. So I have some stamped hexagons up here that I'm just going to mix up a bit. And since this is a border, I'm not really using one of the um, diagrams. And I've only got three colors and two rows, so it's pretty um, limited as to how you can mix things up anyway. So I'm just kind of plugging them in here. Let's see, put a yellow one up here. And as you can see, I mean, just having this die cut frame makes it so much easier to place everything. Okay. And I'm going to end up putting a yellow over here, which 
which I'm going to end up trimming later. And a red over here, which I will also trim later. Okay, so now I'm going to go in and I'm just going to cut this off. I'm going to trim it more accurately later, but just cutting it now so I can get my, um, my little frame removed. And I'm cutting this one. Like that. And then I can remove the tape. And I've got all my perfectly placed hexagons in a border pattern there. And what I'm going to do, since some of them were hanging off the edge of it there, I am going to flip this over and I am going to cut, cut these from the back. Then everything will be nice and smooth and accurate here. Looks like this one might have moved just a tiny bit. There we go. And there's a perfectly laid out border already to uh, add to a card. By just adding a sentiment to the side, um, you have a very easy card that you can complete in just a couple minutes with these hexagons. Um, I wanted to show you yet another technique um, that you could do with these hexagons. I die cut the cover plate frame from regular um, computer typing paper, so it's very thin. And I'm going to temporarily tape this on top of a piece of white cardstock that's cut um, A2 cover size, four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm taping that into place just like that. And I've um, come up with my color scheme here. I'm using Raspberry Fizz, Aquamist, New Leaf, and Sweet Blush. And I've stamped those out in the patterns that I'm using. And um, I'm going to, um, I coordinated those with the letters A, B, C, and D that are on um, the color chart for four colors right here. And I'm kind of using this as a visual reference on the side while I'm stamping. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp um, the hexagons directly on here, kind of like masking because the hexagons are just slightly larger than the openings just to make it easier when you stamp on the actual die cut hexagons so you don't have to worry about lining them up perfectly. So if you want um, your hexagons to be stamped directly onto your paper, this is kind of um, how you would go about doing that. So I'm starting with color A and I am just going to go through here and stamp directly over the openings. And I'm kind of using um, that color chart as my reference. So easy to do this. They're going to be perfectly lined up every time uh, using this method. You don't have to worry about being exact because the stamps are a bit bigger than the opening, which makes it super easy. And I love having this chart beside me as a reference. It makes it so easy for everything to look random every time. And one more down here. So I've got all of those stamped in the first color and now I'm moving on to B, which is uh, the Aquamist with this herringbone print. And I'm just going to add that right along with the others. There's all the C plugged in. And I'm just going in with the uh, last one, which is the Sweet Blush. And the last one's always the easiest because you don't really need to look at the chart because you know it's just all the blank spots left. Oops, I got a little something there. So I have a 
got all of those stamped. And what I'm going to do is peel this up. And I have a perfectly stamped uh, hexagon background directly onto the paper. As you can see, the results are just stunning with this technique, too. Okay, I have another um, technique I'm going to show you. I just ran that um, cover plate hexagon through my die cutting machine like you would um, an impression plate. So all I did was impress um, the pattern into the cardstock like this. And obviously you could just use this um, like this, especially if it was um, on a color of cards, a co colored cardstock. Um, but I wanted to show you how you can actually use this as a guide um, for stamping. So I have all of my ink colors picked out and lined up here. I'm going to move those up a little bit so you can see me actually stamping a bit better. And once again, I'm using um, this color chart just as a visual guideline beside me. So if you see me pausing for a minute, that's what I'm doing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, these impressed guidelines as my guide for stamping the uh, patterns. And I decided I'm not going to really do every one. I'm going to leave a few openings. So bear with me as I figure out which ones I want to leave open and which ones I'm, I'm not. Um, I'm going to go ahead. I think I'm going to go ahead and do all of the A's. Now, like I mentioned before, the hexagon stamps are a little bit bigger than these openings, so you're going to go off the edge of the embossed area just a bit, but it just looks a little bit artistic, like it was kind of printed, maybe even letter-pressed, which is, which is kind of fun. So just try to center as best you can and go with it. Okay, now I'm going to go here, paper, and I'm going to hold it up along the embossed line here, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp it. Whoops. You could do this with a post-it note, too. So there, I've got that little spot stamped. And I think that's it for that. So I'm going to move on to my second color, Mulberry. I'm just going to fill in a few more spaces. Blank. And I'm just going to go to E. Now another tip I wanted to um, let you in on was that um, it's best if you're either stamping through the template like I did in the last project or doing this process here where you're stamping on the embossed um, cover plate. It's best if you use a larger block for the hexagon. That way you can see really, really well and um, it just helps a lot so that you can have everything a bit more um, centered without the edge of the block kind of interrupting everything. And I think I'm good on the rest of that. So I'm going to leave that like this. And I really like the, um, the white ones left blank. But that just kind of shows you how you can emboss this and kind of use that as a guide for stamping as well. 
as you can see, the options are just endless with um, the Happy Hexagon set and the coordinating cover plate. We used it as an impression plate. Um, we used it as a placement tool for a full background. We used it as a mask to stamp directly onto the paper. We used it as a placement tool for borders and even removed some of it to use for sentiments. I hope you've learned a few things today and that you'll give these new hexagon products a try. Thank you for joining me today.